Hey there, so this whole implied volatility, a vectorized implied volatility code has turned into quite the project. So I've been splitting it up into several parts. We did the why could Newton's method fail in the previous video series. And I also said I was going to make a couple of short companion videos, and this is going to be one of those. I kind of feel a little bit silly doing it because it should be an obvious thing, but I don't think I've ever explicitly shown why we want to vectorize some codes. Um, in a previous video on uh, Monte Carlo simulations, we at first glance made a problem a lot more complicated. We had a system of equations that we explicitly wrote as a matrix instead of just doing a simple for loop over that. And I want to justify in some way why we might want to do something like that. Yeah, this thing should be quick, about five minutes. In essence, all we're going to do is take an array and multiply it by two. So uh, let's get to it. So if you recall, when we first did our Monte Carlo simulation, um, sim using a random, wa random walk to simulate a stock, um, stock's behavior, we had an equation like this. To calculate the percent change in the stock price, which is given by this fraction here, uh, aside from this risk-free rate uh, drift, we assume that the percent change was a, a normally distributed number. So we selected a bunch of random numbers from the normal distribution, and then it's scaled by this volatility factor, and that was our, our um, percent change in the, in, the, in the price of the stock. Now, obviously, we could uh, calculate starting from some price, initial price, to um, and use a loop to actually just iterate through to get, say, the price for the next 30 days. And that would be the way to do it with a loop, non-vectorized, it'd be, you know, uh, pretty straightforward. But then we went down, we wrote out a couple of these iterations here, and we noticed that these stock prices formed a system of linear equations. And that was some basic um, rewriting this in terms of matrices. We had a, essentially a sparse matrix equation here where we had um, some terms along the diagonals, and then essentially everything else was zero, and then you know, our, our vectors of stock prices and our vectors of knowns, and we could solve this just by inverting this equa uh, inverting this matrix and, and multiplying through. And all that was just to get at one stock run. Let's see, here was the, the plot from that. And then we extend, extended this to the probability of uh, making 50% on a uh, option trade, where we used it in a Monte Carlo simulation, where each of these blocks would represent a essentially one of those square matrices. Now, obviously, if all these equations up here could be done with one for loop, you could build all these other blocks with just by, but with essentially two nested for loops, one doing the, the um, random walk things, and then, the, and then the second loop basically stitching them together. So this seems like an awful lot of work to recast them, recast it in matrix form just for such a simple problem. And I said the reason you might want to do this is for speed's sake. Uh, loops in these interpreted languages run very fast, and these scientific libraries are essentially compiled from C code or Fort Fortran code. So if you could uh, stitch these together in a way that could be done basically in a single line, your execution speed would increase considerably. So I just want to do a quick demonstration to show you what I mean, and I'm not going to do this in a notebook this time. Uh, because the only C++ compiler I have on here is in SIGWIN, I'm going to do the Python also in a SIGWIN terminal, uh, just to try to be as close to apples to apples comparison as possible. So here we have something pretty simple here. We're creating 10 million random points in a vector. I'm, I'm sorry, 100 million random points in a vector. And all we want to do is multiply that vector times 2. So um, I'm just going to record the start and end times just to calculate them. And I'm just going to come down here and say y is equal to x plus 2. Okay, fair enough. So now we're going to do the same thing in a loop. So we're going to do the start and end times, and then we're going to take, we're going to loop over the side, loop over every index of that vector x, multiply it times two, and stick it into the corresponding, um, corresponding index uh, in in the vector y, and then of course look at the time. And I was going to do the same thing here with list, just basically converting this to a list. However, this causes memory issues because. Um, I'm not quite sure why. The computer should have plenty of memory for it, but apparently not good enough. So I'm going to come down here and just run this in a console. So I'm going to go Python uh, time test.py. So obviously I've edited this down for time, but we have essentially 0.4 seconds versus 80, 81 seconds. So obviously the vectorized way is the vectorized one is the way to go. So I also did this in C++. So this is the same, uh, this code does the same thing. Um, there's the Python, but it's C++. So we allocate memory for our arrays. We create a bunch of um, normally distributed random numbers, put it in there. And then I come down 
these lines here just do the uh, the timing timing code here, and then I just iterate over that loop, multiply it times two, and stick it into the uh, stick it into the output array. And then of course come down here and delete all the all the arrays, uh, clear out all the memory. So let's just run this, and I've already compiled it. So it's um, dot time test dot exe. So there we go, Point uh, almost 0.5 seconds in this case, 0.47. Um, I'm not sure what the optimization flag was used to compile the, uh, the Python libraries, but um, the C++ actually in this, in this case is actually a little bit slower if, if uh, I recall the Python numbers correctly. Okay, so obviously this video is more for the sake of completeness than anything deep or profound about numerical methods, but I would feel remiss if I did not at least demonstrate one, explicitly one example of why you would want to vectorize uh, your code when using these numerical libraries like NumPy or um, even, even in MATLAB you'd want to do something like this. So uh, I'm not going to dwell on it anymore. Um, until next time, see ya.